5G is one of the newest things in the tech world, and that means there's been a lot of debate about how it should be implemented. One bill being considered in Congress would aim to protect 5G technology in the U.S. from potential foreign threats from companies like China's Huawei. The lead sponsor of that bill, Democrat Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger. She joined our colleague Elaine Keanu on Red and Blue yesterday to talk about it. So this bill would require um, that the president lay out a unclassified plan uh, to address the, the growing concerns related to 5G technology. It isn't limited or specific to a country, but it does say that as this technology continues to emerge, we need a plan for how it is that we can ensure that our consumers are safe, uh, how it is that we can engage with our ally uh, and partners to make sure that they can protect the security of the data that may be uh, transmitted across this network, um, and really also look forward beyond 5G? What's the next frontier for data sharing and information sharing to make sure that we are protecting ourselves from potential hacking um, and protect uh, potential espionage? Okay, so the bill isn't the only discussion surrounding the 5G rollout. In a hearing before the House Subcommittee on the Environment last week, a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration official told lawmakers that they're actually concerned about how 5G might impact weather forecasting. CBS News weather producer David Parkinson joins me now to talk about this. So I think weather forecasting, I think satellites, I don't think, and when I think about the 5G sort of little towers, they're very close to homes and that's one of the concerns they seem very far away from weather satellites um, so it's, it's spectrum that is what matters spectrum not the cable company but the <laughs> the actual uh, part of the air that's being used to um, conduct these um, these uh, signals essentially okay so here's essentially what's happening the government wants to auction off spectrum that's at 24.25 gigahertz right that's the low end of the spectrum that they want to auction off 23.8 is where we take a look at water vapor in the atmosphere so 5g in it of itself is not a threat to weather forecasting, but that particular spectrum being so close to the weather spectrum that we use critically is. And there is also a concern, in addition, that once they do 24 and a quarter, maybe they're going to do something that's around where we sense temperature or where we sense uh, different parts of the atmosphere. So it's a, the, the concern now is can you protect uh, the frequency enough so that you're not going to get um, crossed signals and miss something in the forecast? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, I guess I never really sort of considered that the idea of auctioning off this this space that we can't see or touch, but it's for sale. Um, so give us an idea of just what sort of impact this could happen, sort of the worst case scenario. Right. So so the worst case scenario that, that Noah was uh, projecting is, is that this could take us back to the 1980s in terms of our forecasting skill. Wow. What that means, right, is, is that we, we like to say that the 10 day now is as accurate as the seven day used to be, which is as accurate as the five day used to be in the 90s, uh, which is as accurate as the three day used to be in the 80s, right? So as we have gotten better in our forecasting skills and the, the computers have gotten better, we've been able mm -hmm. to crunch more things, uh, we have gotten better at, at skill further out. Mm -hmm. The concern is, is that if you miss one of these water vapor signals at seven days out, you might not see that a hurricane is intensifying. You might not see uh, that there are certain things going on in the atmosphere that are going to steer a storm in one particular direction. Mm -hmm. uh, think of Sandy making its left hand turn. So um, it's not a guarantee. There are ways that you can uh, remedy it and sort of protect those things mm -hmm. uh, but it's important to remember that there are two uh, stations where we do this this monitoring one is in France and one's in the Arctic um, and what they want to do is they want to make sure that when those are sensing things and sending them up to the satellites and and making all those um, communicative um, uh, connections that nothing is getting crossed nothing has interference so you said it's not a guarantee it certainly looks like 5g is coming like right. there's no stop in that train so then what can be done to at least protect you know, the concerns of meteorologists like you. Right, so there's a couple things that you can do. One is you can change the amount of uh, tolerance for noise, right? So right now, basically, um, it, it's a whole complicated thing, but essentially you can regulate how much beyond the spectrum um, things are allowed to go just with, with extra signals that don't quite fall within sort of the bands of Is this of sort of like a buffer, buffer signals yeah, almost? Yeah, essentially, right. right. So, uh, so that's one thing that you can do. The other thing is, again, you could say that instead of auctioning off 24 and 
and a quarter to 25 and a quarter, we're only going to give off 25, four and three quarters to 25 and a quarter, right? right? You can protect that uh, actual legitimate uh, spectrum there. So um, what the government would say is they think that they're happy with their error tolerance, that, that their uh, figure is uh, suitable. The weather enterprise community would like to say, no, we would like um, a much stricter standard. Yeah. Um, it would be more costly. It might, might hurt our competitiveness with uh, Chinese companies uh, doing that. That being said, uh, you know what would be worse than hurting our competitiveness? Uh, missing a big storm exactly. um, that, that could impact you know, tens or hundreds of millions of people. Right. Um, and, and that is something that I, I hope uh, you know, we, we do have a problem, which is we don't have a confirmed administrator of uh, the National of Yeah, NOAA, there are right? a lot of vacant positions. Right, there are a lot of vacant positions. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you don't have people necessarily looking out in the way that they might. Uh, and that is a concern. But hopefully uh, there's been enough that's being raised right now uh, that they might uh, at least have a, a quick second thought on yeah, it. Yeah, you know, competitiveness, people's lives. I think we should lean towards protecting people's lives. David, thank you so much. Sure thing.